Hello everyone, I'm Fede from Play and in this video we're going to take a tour on Play's Liquid Glass version, which is now in beta. This version of Play will allow you to design for the upcoming iOS 26. We created a project showcasing what's new that will be really helpful as you get started. The beta version introduces the new Liquid Glass effect, a new element called Glass Container, New UI for top bar, nav bar, and native elements like sliders or semantic controls. New properties and actions for SF symbols and the new draw animation, as well as updates for sheets. This is the first version of this beta, and we will continue adding to it. In order to use this version, you need macOS and iOS 26 betas installed on your Mac and iPhone, and the Play Beta version installed on both platforms too. This is a beta environment and it's for testing purposes only. Don't use it for production level projects. Don't open your current projects in it. And if you must do so, please duplicate it first so you're safe. You can always revert back to the current stable version of Play, downloading it from our website. Let's start with something really cool, the new liquid glass effect. You can apply this to any stack. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to go into the attributes panel, then blurs, and now you will see the new material, glass. By turning this on, you're going to see that now I can move the object around the page and there's going to be refractions and refractions and you can see that it beautifully surfaces the colors of the photo. We also have support for light and dark glass effect as well as for tinting. We also have a new property, interactivity. If interactivity is on, the object will react to touch as we interact with it. So for example, I can tap anywhere in the surface area and you see that it illuminates as a form of feedback. If you turn this off, now the liquid glass effect is still there, but the object is not glowing or giving me any form of feedback. One important thing to notice is that the glass effect is based on the object size. The larger the width or the height, the less clear the effect becomes. We recommend keeping the height or the width of the object below 64 points if you want to get a fully clear glass effect. Second, let's talk about the new glass effect container, a new type of element that combines multiple liquid glass elements into a single shape by morphing them into one another. On the right, in the example, you can see that I can move and drag around these buttons and as they are approaching one to the other, you can see that they are going to get morph into one single shape. I can do this and split them up or I can go closer and put them together. You can find the new glass effect container in the app panel in the top left of the app here or by searching for glass. In order for the effect to work, you need to take in consideration two things. The first one is that the objects that you want to morph into one shape need to be inside the glass container. If not, it's not going to work. And the second thing is that both objects need to have the glass effect on. If you turn on any other blur, like material, progressive, or layer blur, this won't work. Lastly, the new glass effect container has a spacing property. The spacing determines how far the morphing effect will reach. The larger the number, the larger the effect. That's why if I set the spacing of the container from 40 points to zero points, you see that there is no morphing effect, but if I change it to be 200, you see that it increases. Next, let's talk about navbar. Having a navbar with liquid glass effect in play is as easy as turning a switch on. I'm going to select the page, then I'm going to go into navigation and turning on navigation bar. You can see that by default, the buttons in the navbar have the liquid glass effect on. If you navigate to other pages and you have more or less buttons in the toolbar, the morph animation will happen automatically. The same thing happens for top bar. When you turn it on in play, it's going to get the new UI automatically. For example, I can long press and start dragging and now you see the new glass animation to navigate to another page. But let's come back to controls. Native elements like sliders, switches, and submitted controls also get the new UI and interactivity. 
but we also have a new element called alert that allows you to show notifications to your users. And this also gets the new UI. UI menu also got updated. So when you add a UI menu inside play, it will also showcase the new UI and behaviors. One of my favorite updates to iOS 26 is native buttons. They get two new styles. You can find them by selecting the button, going to the style property, and then you will see glass and prominent glass. Prominent glass is especially cool because it applies the glass effect into the tin color of the button. These updated native buttons also react to touch and therefore they illuminate as a form of feedback as I'm touching them. Sheets also got new superpowers in iOS 26. It introduces a new detent behavior. When I tap on this button to pop up a sheet, you see that it no longer fills the width of the iPhone. If I go to a smaller detent, it keeps the same width. But if I now pan up to go to the bigger detent, now it basically fills the entire width of the display. So all this will come for free in play. Finally, we added almost over 400 new SF symbols. When you click on the SF symbol panel, you can find them in the iOS 26 category. We also added two new properties, gradient and variable value mode. And we've also added two new SF symbol animations, draw on and draw off. If I tap on this button, you can see on the screen both animations. To add this animation to an SF symbol, you can go into interaction mode and then you can add the set SF symbol effect action. And now in the animation property, you will see the new draw off and draw on animations. That's all. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.